Hey, Mike Gillette here with a question for you. What do you do on a Saturday night? Now, I ask that question because for me, it is Saturday night, specifically a little after 9 p.m. And I am preparing to go to the gym. So what makes a 56-year-old go to the gym on a Saturday night? Well, there's a, a number of reasons, but uh, one among them that I will speak to is that 30 plus years ago, I was um, physically leveled. Uh, I was in a climbing accident, serious climbing accident, uh, a circumstance that could have easily killed me, and, and I was fortunate indeed to uh, escape with the, uh, the injuries that I did, which uh, were broken ankles, broken back, and uh, for a protracted length of time, about four and a half years, it appeared as though I would never return to physical activity beyond walking around. And uh, that was, um, it was a bitter pill to swallow because up to that point I had been inordinately physically active and had been planning on a inordinately active physical life. I was uh, in the military at the time, so I as a result of the accident, I was processed out. There was no indication I would do anything beyond walk again. And during those four and a half years of not being able to do much of anything, I promised myself that if somehow, some way, I was ever able to reclaim my physical self, that I would hang on to that as long as I possibly could. So the idea of being as strong as I can be for as long as I can be is, uh, is very important to me. And it's uh, something that, uh, in, in terms of an ongoing quest, if you will, or a standard of, of conduct, uh, it has been inconvenient. It has hurt me over the years. In fact, uh, I feel the effects of my rigorous pursuits nearly every day. I'm always a little bit banged up. I'm always a little bit sore. Uh, none of which deters me from doing what I want to do. And this is not me trying to motivate people to exercise. I mean, you're either going to do that or you're not. But it is me speaking to the importance of living your life the way that you want to live it, you know, identifying priorities and then following through those priorities and recognizing that those priorities may not be things that other people will necessarily understand. Uh, they certainly won't value them the way that you do, and, and that's okay. Uh, far more important is for you to understand why you value them, and if you value them, you know, live true those values. Now, in the case of uh, one of my obsessive pursuits, which is, you know, strength, um, it's easy to fall out of certain pursuits over time, which is the other thing that I, I feel compelled to speak on. Um, you can pursue photography, you can pursue oil painting, or the violin, or horticulture, whatever your thing is, and there may come a time where you know, other things sort of in, encroach on that and, and push in on that and act to uh, try to compel you to do less of that or to do none of that. Um, certainly within the realm of uh, the physical that that happens, particularly for those of us who uh, are mature. We are when you are 50 plus, it's easy to buy into the conventional wisdom of, well, you know, you better slow down. Yeah, take it easy. Uh, don't hurt yourself. Um, the, the problem with that is once you adopt a particular attitude about your thing, you know, oh, it's not practical for me anymore. Oh, this is sort of frivolous. This isn't going to lead to anything. Uh, you're going to start finding reasons not to do the thing. Now, if you are a mature person who pursues physical uh, things, there's all kinds of reasons why you should either A, take it easy, or just you know, back off that stuff altogether because, oh my goodness, you don't want to hurt yourself. Um, and the problem, again, is if I bought into the notion that I was, because of my age, I was somehow now fragile, 
I, I was you know, some, some delicate creature uh, in danger of uh, hurting myself because of my, my reckless uh, exploits, then I would really become focused on the things that my body tells me. Because my body gives me feedback all the time. I mean, I'm not oblivious to uh, the sensations of just living as Mike Gillette. But living as Mike Gillette is more than just sensations of discomfort. It's it, trying to adhere to a code of my own creation. And what I hope for you is that you have both a code and you have the resolve to live by that code, that you live your values, that you are a person of integrity, that you are living your particular truth. So if that is a truth that uh, leads you to the gym at uh, odd hours, odd days of the week or it leads you to do other things that regular people which is everyone who's not you uh, would deem you know odd or even inappropriate well we don't we don't have to uh, to jettison those people from our lives but we do have to uh, make clear that we are who we are we're gonna live who we are and if they want to you know f be fully engaged with the real who that we are, they need to recognize the value that we place on those things that make us who we are. So by all means, do the things that make you who you are. I'm going to the gym.